but let's put a time frame on it. Look at Hebrews 9. Let's walk through this. I want to walk through this carefully, and then we're going to use some, let me use a few markers as we go through this. Hebrews 9, 6. Um, I wanted to do the whole chapter, but I know better. Now, when these things, <laughs> when these things had been thus prepared, the priest always went into the first part of the tabernacle performing the services. But into the second part, the high priest went alone once a year, not without blood. Here's the Day of Atonement, which he offered for himself and for the people's sins committed in ignorance. The Holy Spirit indicating this, that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest while the first tabernacle was still standing. There's no way in for Israel while the first tabernacle is still standing. The Holy Spirit indicates it. The Holy Spirit demands we know this. The Holy Spirit testifies to this. There's no way into the presence of God as long as the tabernacle is standing. Let me say it again. There's no way into the presence of God as long as the temple is still standing. Got it? You can't get in. What, what happens at Calvary? Snap. Veil gets rent. Temple still stands. But what's God saying about the temple? Yeah. It ain't working. We left your house to you desolate. But it's still standing there, isn't it? It stands there for a whole generation. It stands there for 40 years after Jesus. It stands there when the author pens the book of Hebrews. It stands there when the author pens the book of Hebrews to a bunch of Hebrews who've accepted Jesus, who keep going back to the temple and offering lambs. And the author of the book of Hebrews is going, the Holy Spirit's saying, there's no way you can really know the heart of God as long as that temple's standing. So we need to put some time frame on this baby. We need to bookend this dude because you guys are living in what you think is an everlasting lambs die, goats die, bulls die. Why do you think it's everlasting? Because Leviticus 16 told you it was. Was God wrong? No, he's everlasting in the covenant he has, but it just snapped at the cross. It was torn in half because you paid 30 pieces of silver. We're in a whole new ball game now. This is, we're in a new dimension. We're in a whole new era. We need to change the way we think because we're not still killing old lambs and goats and bulls, we've got a new death. And the Holy Spirit needs something to happen so that we can be ushered into the reality of this. The Holy Spirit indicates this, that the way into the holiest, I'm in verse 8 again, was not yet made manifest while the first tabernacle was still standing. It was symbolic for the present time in which, in which both gifts and sacrifices are offered, which can... The tabernacle was symbolic for what's going on now in Jerusalem. Gifts and sacrifices are offered which can't make him who performed the service perfect in regard to what? Gotcha. It's the same argument. I know we're in nine and tens where the argument we, we read originally, but notice the argument is it, the temple doesn't work. Why is he saying this? Because they're going back offering lambs. He's going, why are you going back offering lambs? You can't get in the presence of God offering a lamb. It didn't work for your grandpa. It didn't work for your dad. It's not going to work for you. Concerned with foods and drinks and various washings and fleshly ordinances and posed until... Time out before you even read anymore. There can be no until because Leviticus 16 says this is supposed to happen how long? Everlasting. So how dare the author of Hebrews do what he does in chapter 9, verse 10? Did you notice what it's supposed to happen until? Until the time of Reformation. Now, when is that? When is the time of Reformation? What is the moment when we're supposed to reform our way out of an old system and into a new system? Well, here's a good hint. When the curtain tears in half, I think the clock is ticking. When the covenant gets snapped at the cross... I think it's time to realize something just got its back broken. When John the Baptist says to the Pharisees, the ax is laid to the root of your tree, and there's one coming who's going to burn the chaff with unquit, I think it's time to start the clock. The time of reformation, time's almost up on what they were going through on that system. The time of reformation. Okay, break a couple of these things down. The, the temple was, the tabernacle was, Symbolic for present time. That's verse 9. The temple activity is supposed to last until the time of Reformation. That's verse 10. Look at eleven, twelve. Christ came as the high priest of the good things to come. That's wrong in the Greek. The Greek is Christ came as high priest of the good things that have come. Past tense. 
Past tense in the Greek. A lot of your translations will get that right. New King James dropped the ball big time. That's one of those moments where you go, gosh, would have really helped if someone had translated tense. Tense would help because Christ isn't to come. Christ has come. That's the whole point of this. With the greater and more perfect tabernacle that's not made with hands, that is not of this creation, not the one you can touch and taste and feel and see and smell. 12, not with bulls. Not with the blood of bulls and goats and calves, but with his own blood, he entered the most holy place. How much? Once for all. Having obtained eternal redemption. Look at that. How long was the temple sacrifice supposed to last? Leviticus 16? Everlasting. Jesus dies one time. Those those things were happening daily and yearly. Jesus comes along and goes one time so that you can have eternal ramifications. I'm only going to do this once, guys. I'm only going to do this once. That's all you need, though. You don't need me to do it twice. It doesn't matter what age you live in, language you speak, color your skin is, what time area you're born into. It's not going to matter because I only need to do it once because we're about to have a time of reformation. And when we hit the time of reformation, nothing's going to matter that happened before that. It's all going to be affecting what happens after that. Christ has come to make that happen. So he came. Here's your other marker. Once for all. 